Hi. Your goal is to generate some text using Python, and one way to do that is actually to use Tracery within Python. Normally, Tracery is a JavaScript library. It was created by Kate Compton, and many people use it to make Twitter bots, like with cheap bots done quick. There is, however, a way to use it in Python, and I'm going to use it in this video to try and create a novel for NanoGenmo. This is a Python notebook that I've set up to attempt to do just that. Let me switch my tab over here, and here we go. Um, this is a novel that I, this is a notebook that I set up to generate a novel just as a trial to make sure I knew how to do all this. And so this hopefully, this video will be a little shorter than the last one I did where I was kind of figuring it out as I went and ended up being quite long. Um, what I'm doing here is it's based on Tracery. Tracery is something you may have used to make a Twitter bot and it's great, you should use it. Uh, it's a replacement grammar. And Allison Parrish has created a Python implementation of it. Here's her GitHub page about it. It's very straightforward in terms of how it works. It's very similar to how it works in JavaScript. You just add, have to add a little bit of extra stuff to make it work in Python, but it's not bad at all. Now this is going to be uh, something that I end up printing, and so or printing as a PDF, and so I've installed Wheezy Print here. I'm also going to install Tracery. Neither of these are going to be part of my Colab Notebook environment to begin with, so I need to go ahead and install these in the environment using the exclamation point to invoke pip which runs it externally to the notebook and then it installs everything including the uh, any dependencies that may be necessary. Turns out those are all already there so it should be good. Now I can import Tracery. I'm also importing Tracery modifiers with the base English modifiers which are just some of the fancier things you can do with Tracery like definite articles and pluralization. I don't think I'm going to actually use those but I have them here just in case. I'm also going to be importing Markdown uh, because I'm going to be formatting this as a novel using Markdown and then turning Markdown into HTML, turning HTML into a PDF, and then that should be good. And I get a little fancy with that, so I'm going to be doing some stuff with fonts this time. Now here's how I need to generate text. I went ahead and tried to do basically a novel, but this is already kind of complicated, so let me simplify this a little bit. Uh, this is just, first of all, uh, just a first a basic demo of Tracery. With Tracery, you define a grammar, and then you run the grammar, and it will replace symbols with options from a list that you've supplied when you define the grammar. So let's do a, a pretty simple example here. Rules equal, and then curly brackets. The notation here, I'm actually creating a Python dictionary, but it works like a JSON object would in, in JavaScript, if I understand correctly. So we'll say origin. Origin is going to be the start symbol that I use, and we'll say, um, we're going to make this something along the lines of, hello, it is Thursday. All right, so, but we're going to actually replace these with some things uh, that we're going to get to next. So I'm going to put a comma there, and then I'll say uh, greeting. I'll make a new symbol called greeting, and I'll say, I'll give it some options. I'm using square brackets, separating these with list. I'll say hello. I'll say hi. I'm going to say greetings. I'll say, what is up? And all of those now are available within the greeting symbol, so I'm going to replace the place where it was with that using the hash marks on either side. So now it's going to say greeting. Uh, there it is. I don't know why I couldn't find that. Now for the day, let's just make this also say things and let it just sort of didn't figure out what day, it just like randomly pick a day. That should be a complete grammar. Now I'm going to double check the documentation because that's always how I learn things. And Allison has a nice example here. I can just use it's very similar to what I just wrote actually. So right, so I need to compile the grammar and then add modifiers if I'm using it and then flatten the grammar. Great, okay. So I'm just gonna copy this code from the documentation because it's already very close to what I need. And where was I? Oh, here we are. So just to find these rules, the grammar is going to now be the object after the rules have been compiled, right? Okay, so now I'm going to print the grammar and origin is the start symbol for the grammar. So this should work, let's see. What is up? It is Thursday. Hi, uh, it is Thursday. 
what is that? But it's Thursday. So I'm just running this. And this basic workflow here, this is what you see when you run cheap bots done quick and you like load it up and you see what happens. So to make this generate enough text to consider it a novel, we do have to do a little bit of work to add some structure. And this is a little wonky, so let me explain it a bit. Um, I always like to put the origin last. For some reason, that just feels more natural to me. And what I've done is make a very long string here, and I added the three quotes at the beginning and at the end so I could add line breaks within it just to make it easier for me to read. And I am going to make this into Markdown, and so I had to do a little bit of a trick here. So I wanted the, the title of this to be my tracery book, and so I want that printed as an H1 tag in HTML, which I do in Markdown by putting the hash mark in there. And that's how it would look if this was going to be uh, Markdown. The problem is that tracery is looking for hash marks and trying to do things with them. So I was getting errors whenever I compiled it and then ran it with it printed like this. So I had to do an escape before that, a backslash before that hash mark. And so what I'm telling tracery is, I literally mean a hash mark here. I mean, don't try to compile this this is literally a hash mark, and so we'll go from there. Uh, so let me build it out. Like I actually, the actual content of this, you can see here in the sentences, and the way it becomes a novel is by combining all these sentences together in random ways. I'm adding some spaces after those because I realized I forgot those. I pulled these from a book of quotations that I found on Gutenberg.org, but if you're using this method to create your own novel, you should put a lot more thought than I did into these sentences because these are going to be the content. Also, these chapter titles, I went ahead and made, I just pre-wrote a few just random things off the top of my head, and um, typo there. Again, you would want to put more thought into that. You could do different replacements within the chapter titles, but these work differently than the sentences, so I've spelled those out as a separate list. Now, as you see here, each every time I run the paragraph symbol, it's going to pick a some number of sentences to put together, followed by a couple of line breaks. And so that's gonna be one, two, three, four, five sentences, or three, or seven, or eight. Uh, there is a way that someone has figured out to do this recursively so it can pick a number of repetitions randomly, um, but that's a little wonk, I mean, that's a little convoluted. So this is, I think, very straightforward in terms of showing you what it's doing. Uh, so each paragraph is gonna be composed by some number of sentences, it picks the number, and then each chapter is gonna be composed by some number of paragraphs, and you can pick these this way. Of course, you can make shorter paragraphs, uh, you can make fewer paragraphs per, for a chapter, we can make one that just has one paragraph. It's just gonna pick one of these options randomly, and let's say it picks this option, that's gonna create one, two, three, four, five, six paragraphs. Each one of those paragraphs is gonna have one of these options for how many sentences are in it. And then all together, that's gonna to be printed as the chapter. So I could, uh, you know, I've got Tracery Book as the title, then it picks a, uh, it picks a chapter title, then it prints a chapter, and goes through that several times, okay? Then ultimately it saves all this as a novel. So let's see if this works here. And it didn't print any errors, so I guess that worked, but let's see how many words are actually in this novel. I haven't actually tried this, so I might need to tweak this a little bit. Let's say novel and then split it on, you know, on white space, just a very rough way to get it. Count word count, 1699, that's not enough. So I should probably add some more. I can make the sentences longer. I can make the sentences repeat more. I can make more chapters. I'm not gonna do that now. I think this is a good enough demonstration, but hopefully you get the idea that you would expand this simply by repeating it. Um, I'll just add an extra chapter or two or three. Just doing some copying and pasting there. Let's run it again. Now we're up to you know almost 4,000. Still not nearly enough, but you get the idea hopefully and you could expand this to be more comprehensive. Uh, in various ways. You can expand any number of these things. So now that I have novel, I have a novel on this variable called novel, I can do all I need, I can do what I normally do or have been doing to save this as a PDF. This, I did add a little bit here, so let me explain this, except I'll just show you that I got this from uh, the documentation from WheezyPrint. It took some trial and error. I'm, you know, it was not something that I just immediately got. Um, I had to go down here where it talks about doing a font configuration object because what I found is that the fonts available on the Colab server are very minimal. It's just liberation fonts, the, the liberation group of font families. And that wasn't what I wanted, so I thought I'd, it would be good to make it look more bookish. So if you go to Google Fonts, you can load fonts from here, except you have to do a little bit more work, and that's what I was doing in my notebook just then. I found this one, Meriwether. It's a pretty good book-looking font. Obviously, there's lots of them in here. When you choose one you like, I'll show you what I did for Meriwether. 
you let's say you want the regular weight 400 which is usually what what you want and you can go ahead and add a few other styles for it the bold and so on uh, once you're happy with that then you've got a couple of options here when you go to the embed and if you look at it you, what you want is this import statement here like so that gives you a, a url to the font with some options that's the one you'll need to copy and paste into this code and that's what i put here so this is a little bit there's a little, little bit going on here first of all you have to create this font configuration piece you can render the html and then add the css after the fact which is what i'm doing here as long as you load this font config option into this other argument and then you write it this way honestly i'm kind of just rambling through this because you know i just would say copy what i have and then um, change out the part you want so if you pick a different font let's say uh, instead of merryweather let's say i wanted to do let's pick something kind of silly let's mm, yeah, you don't want cursive but let's okay let's try orbitron why not <laughs> i don't really recommend this font but you know it's okay uh oh yeah i need to I need to remove merryweather and now i've got my embed statement just embedding orbitron so i'm going to swap out my import statement just copying and pasting that back here and this was what's on line seven in this cell and i'm writing css here so line breaks don't actually matter but it makes it easier to read so now i'll also switch this to orbitron and run this and hopefully this made a file called novel.pdf i actually found it easier to generate a png while i was double checking that's why there's several of these in here but i will take a look at novel.pdf first and i will open that here in the browser so you can see it too Let's see if it works it works okay so it's written in Orbitron. Um, as you can see, Orbitron is pretty striking as a font. It's not necessarily that readable, especially in paragraph form, but it looks pretty good as the title. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting. <laughs> I actually did a, a large part of my dissertation about fonts like this, things that look science fiction-y. And it's pretty interesting, the history of that, but I'm not gonna go into that now because I wrote a whole dissertation about it. Okay, so that's a pretty good introduction, hopefully, to using PyTracery or Py Tracery within Python, thanks to Allison Parrish's port of Kate Compton's uh, software that she wrote in JavaScript. So thanks to Allison and Kate for making those. And thanks for watching this video. I hope it was helpful.